All right, so I teased off the top that, that uh, rotten eggs, the smell of rotten eggs could be good for you. So we're going to figure this all out with Shelly because I thought this was very funny when you sent it. And I can't even say what this is that we're talking about today. So, so let you do it. <laughs> so we're talking about glutathione. 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 So yes, it's a sulfur-based compound, hence the reason it smells like yes. rotten eggs. Um, <laughs> but it's an antioxidant. So like any antioxidant, like vitamin C or vitamin E, um, it provides us with, with uh, protection against oxidative stress. Okay. The special thing about glutathione is it's particularly concentrated in our lungs. So when we're dealing with any lung disease or any, um, you know, inhaled irritants that sort of trigger pulmonary symptoms. Right. This is phenomenal. And I find a lot of people, it's sort of an underrated antioxidant when it comes to lung health. Okay. And I, I mean, well... Maybe because of the smell, because it does have a bit of smell, but yes. this is the machine here, like this is how you get it to... Yeah, so this is what we, this is a compressor, and so it aerosolizes your glutathione, so you inhale it. The reason being, um, we can't, we don't really have any food sources of glutathione because our body makes it. Okay. Um, and it makes it to protect us from oxidative stress that is part of the natural process of metabolism. We create... Um, oxidative stress uh, but we, we don't eat it so what we eat is something called N-acetylcysteine and our body converts it so there are supplements that you can buy pills of okay. glutathione I don't recommend them because we don't typically eat glutathione we actually digest it so they've not been shown to increase our cellular levels of glutathione very effectively if you can't do this therapy and inhale it directly far more efficient to supplement the precursor, which is N-acetylcysteine, or NAC. Okay, but probably not as effective as doing something not like this. nearly as effective. Okay, so we're gonna try this. Yeah, so this, even though it smells like rotten eggs, and I'd rotten much eggs. rather smell a skunk than rotten eggs, but let's give it this a whirl. Well. And how long would you have to do this? So, so this just, lasts about 20 minutes for, okay. for a typical dose. And you just put it on like this? Put it on. This is a little bit loud. In. Yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> Oh, that's awful. It's only awful for a couple minutes, though. For a, a couple minutes? I could never do that before. <laughs> a couple minutes. So, so this is oh. the therapy that we do. It's actually very well researched for pulmonary diseases like pulmonary fibrosis and COPD and emphysema. You're going to smell like... You'd you have smell to that suffer for the rest that of the for day. two minutes before it would. But again, I mean, I guess breathing it in, this could be really helpful for people. And Far at the more end of direct. The day, I mean, if, if you need the help, it's worth mm -hmm. it. You get over it. I mean... It's Not that I was over exaggerating, because honestly I wasn't, but it's because I really, really dislike that smell. Well, and we, I actually try to get my kids to do this. I still smell. <laughs> You'll smell it all day. <laughs> oh, thanks, Shelly. Yeah, you could have warned me about that before I put that on my face. <laughs> but yeah, we try to get our kids to do this. My five-year-old will tolerate it for a couple of minutes. The two-year-old doesn't like the noise, so she won't use it. Um, but we are all exposed to oxidative stress in our lungs, uh, whether it's inhaled pollutants or... Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, people with allergies even, I find, do, it very, do very well with this because um, glu uh, glutathione has an effect. It's called a mucolytic effect, so it tends to thin mucus. Okay. So it's also, also helpful for sinus infections and congestion. And So if your allergy-related symptoms are, you know, a lot of congestion, great for that. But you'd have to sit there, as you said, you sit 20 there. minutes so that you get the effect. Yes, and it all runs. You did say you could put some essential oils or something in there as well and make it smell a little bit better. Yeah. So I lavender-scented. Yeah. I just didn't do that eggs. for you today. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that. I appreciate it. Now, can you have one of these machines yourself, or is it something that you would need to come see you uh, for? You can get a compressor, yes. Um, you can't get the nebulized glute, like the actual that has glutathione, to be though. Through, yeah. So we use glutathione, it. diluted a little bit with some saline, just so that the smell isn't as strong. And yes, then you can sort what of. What a put great some. option for people who you know this is an issue with, and and for those who just want to clean things out. Yeah, that's why we tried to do it. We Tyler and I do this regularly ourselves because of the exposure that we have just in in the environment. Um, but yeah, lung diseases are. We have remarkable results with people with lung disease. Wow. Pulmonary embolisms and emphysema and pulmonary fibrosis. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, at the end of the day, if you're dealing with stuff like that, you want to take on something like this because even if it smells a little bad, it can really, really help you. It's phenomenal. Which is great. Yeah, so now you talked great. about these that are that you could take. Yeah, this is our main precursor. So if you take the N-acetylcysteine, it does tend to increase your cellular levels of glutathione, but it takes a long time before that's transferred to pulmonary glutathione. Right. So indirect, but if you can't 
can't tolerate the inhaled glutathione, this is your next best option. And then we have combinations that are all N-acetylcysteine based, and then they'll usually use some combination of, of pulmonary herbs and demulcents and anti-inflammatories. Well, it's really fascinating because it's not something we really think about, right? But yeah. it's so important. I mean, we just take a look and understand the toxins in our environment that we're breathing in every single day, yeah. and then those who, who deal with you know, lung issues like asthma or anything else to begin with, yeah. it'd be, it would be that much, you know, harder to, to go through this. Yeah, asthma, you have to be careful because asthma sufferers tend to have a higher risk of sulfate, sulfite sensitivity. Oh. And because this is a sulfur-based compound, patients with asthma, I do get them to test their urine before they do okay. for so sulfite sensitivity. I wouldn't, I never even knew that. So mm -hmm. there's a connection there. Why is mm -hmm. that? Uh, it's just a part of the inflammatory response and the immune overactivity hypersensitivity. Wow. Yeah. So how often, if you if this is something that can help you, should you do something like this? Oh, Tyler and I, because we're just doing it sort of preventatively, we'll do it once a month, once every two months, you know, whenever we, we get a chance. But for people with something like pulmonary fibrosis or COPD, uh, the studies suggest two to three times a week. Wow. Um, which is difficult to get into a busy lifestyle. So sure. I suggest a minimum of once a week until we get some symptom control, and then you sort of go on to your maintenance dose. And you've seen good results with this. Phenomenal. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's awesome. Good yeah. to hear. Mm -hmm. Always good information. Yeah, thanks. Always good things you guys doing. Any workshops or anything coming up? Uh, we have a weight loss, metabolism, like a weight loss. We don't focus on weight loss in the seminar. It's, it's metabolism support. Uh, that's on this Saturday. Um, and, and is that usually a lot of problem with people when it comes to losing weight or, or is just their metabolism not functioning properly? We tend to sabotage ourselves with sort of the typical North American style of eating with metabolism support and, and what people who do have in their past done a lot of yo-yo dieting, you really shoot yourself in the foot because every time you have calorie restriction, you slow your metabolism down. Yeah, I hear that all the yeah. time. People don't realize that. Yeah. They really don't. And then yeah. just the foods that they're eating in general. So that'd be a great yeah. one. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Shelly. Yeah, thanks. Always Linda. great having you on minus the smelling of the rotten <laughs> eggs. But hey, it's good for you, so let's do it. All right, Full Circle Healthcare is where you can go on Centennial Parkway in Stony Creek, 905-930-7769. Go to their website, fullcirclehealthcare.ca, where you get more information on their workshops, and you can also follow them on Twitter.